All right, hello everybody. In this video, we're gonna go through all the equipment in my camera bag for 2022. Talk about why I use what I use, what I particularly use, the different things that I have for, and talk about some of the upgrades that I've made recently. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody. In this video, I've decided to go through the equipment that I have in my camera bag. I know that it's a little bit of a YouTube cliche to do the what's in my camera bag for 2022 video. But at the same time, I have swapped out quite a bit of my gear over the last few months as some of my older equipment has failed or just kind of reached the end of its usable lifespan for me. And so I'm gonna talk about why I've gotten the equipment that I've gotten, what was behind those choices, and what I use all the various different pieces for. So, of course, we should get started with my camera body, the camera itself. At the beginning of this year, I decided to make the switch from the Nikon D750 that I'd been using for over four and a half years and upgrade into Nikon's Z-mount mirrorless system with the Nikon Z6 II. Now, specifications-wise, they're similar cameras. Uh, of course, the Z6 II is a newer body, but the main driver for me at that point was Nikon with the release of the Z9 and with all the new Z-mount lenses that are coming out, they're making it pretty clear that the Z-mount is the future of the brand and digital cameras. And they have been discontinuing F-mount bodies and lenses at a pretty good pace. So it's, it's kind of pretty clear that the Nikon D780 that was released around the same time as, this, as the Z6, I think, was probably going to be the last Nikon digital SLR to come out. And, you know, that's, that's kind of just the main reason that I decided to make this change. Now, when I upgraded many years ago from my Nikon D300 to my Nikon D750, I found that my Nikon D300 had almost no value to sell it, to trade it, to all that. So I just hung on to it for a few, for a few years. And I didn't want to get to that point with the D750 as well. I still had pretty good value to sell it right now. I actually took the old D300 and used it and got Nikon to give me a hundred bucks for it when I, when I bought this Z6 II. So I was pretty happy with that. So I ended up divesting myself of both of those camera bodies in the process of getting the Z6 II. Now I've had it for about three months and Unfortunately, the weather here in Colorado has not cooperated a lot for getting out and doing a lot of night photography or hiking and stuff like that. But with my limited usage of it, I'm, I'm finding that I'm really impressed with it so far, especially for night shooting. The live view screen on the back of the camera is really, really great. I'm trying to find a, think of a good way to quantify that. but has great resolution. Um, it's very easy to manual focus when I'm doing my night photography on the live view screen, especially with the focus peaking feature. And something I really like a lot is the extended exposure times that Nikon put into this second generation of the Z6, and I think maybe even the Z7, to where it doesn't you have to be in manual mode, but it doesn't just top out at 30 seconds as most cameras do. It actually has built-in shutter speeds that go all the way up to 900 seconds or 15 minutes long. And that can have a variety of uses. The main usage for me is when I'm doing my Milky Way shots, my night photography, I often do a foreground blend 
where I'm taking a foreground shot at a much longer shutter speed and a lower ISO to get a much cleaner foreground look. And not having to time that with my iPhone anymore is pretty great. So just to recap that, traded in the Nikon D750 because I could still get good value for it right now. And as the market shifts more and more in the mirrorless direction, I thought that that value at some point before too much longer would just crater and it would be useless to me and have almost no value just like my D300 did. So I made that decision to make the swap to the Nikon Z6 II. Now why the Z6 II over the, over the Z7 II or even one of the first generation of those or the Z9 or the cheaper Z5 ZFC? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, the Z the Z6 II is pretty comparable specifications-wise to the D750 that I've been using and liked a lot. It, it kind of fits in with my niche of doing a lot of night photography, a lot of high ISO shooting. It does very well at that. It has very high frame rates. It's a fast camera for shooting wildlife and stuff like that, which I do a bit of. And... I found that the 24 megapixels of the D750 really didn't hinder me that much at all when it came to making large prints to sell through my website. The image quality was good enough that I could blow it up to a pretty good size. You know, I've sold up to 26 by 39 Milky Way prints on metal. I did a four foot panorama for a customer earlier this year. No problem with, with the 24 megapixel camera because the image quality is there. I can blow it up on the computer in Photoshop and it comes out really nice. So even though 45 megapixels would be nice, I really want to have that, that high ISO performance that the 24 megapixel camera offers. So that's why I chose the Z6 II over the Z7 or honestly the Z9, you know, it's I think charging for it five, six thousand dollars. I didn't have that kind of money to spend on it. So that is the Z6 II, which is my current camera body. If you have any specific questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. Now, as you can see, I have this, this big 70 to 200 lens attached, and this is the Nikon Z mount 70 to 200. So why did I make this my very first Z mount lens purchase? Well, I had an older Tamron 70-200 f2.8 lens and, you know, one of the concerns I had with switching over to the Z mount is I was going to have to get the FTZ adapter, which I have, to adapt all my old F mount lenses and curious how those F mount lenses would perform. And I found that most of them are doing pretty well, but the old Tamron 70-200 that I had it was always a bit of a slow focusing lens and I found that using it on the adapter it was even slower and well that's often not that big of a deal it really was becoming tricky to get it to focus well and also the fact that at this point it was a 15 year old design <clears throat> it was starting to show its age a little bit image quality wise compared to what I was getting with some of my other lenses. So I started looking at some other options and although it was quite expensive, I landed on the, the Z mount 70 to 200 as the way I wanted to go. Um, pretty much the best image quality out there you can get in a lens of this range, which is a lens, no matter which model or camera brand you're shooting with, you know, if you're a landscape photographer, portrait shooter, a, a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, I'd highly recommend you have one of these in your camera bag. It's really, really useful in a lot of different situations. Great, great range to have. It's, it's great to have an f2.8 version to be able to, if you're shooting portraiture, you can get that nice shallow depth of field that you like. If you're trying to do low light shooting with it, having that f2.8 aperture makes it that much better to shoot with because it focuses better, it lets in more light, you can shoot at a lower ISO with your camera. I just, 
I've had a 70-200 F2.8 in my bag for the last 13 years, and I love having it. Um, as far as the Z-mount lens in particular, I've only used it a little bit, but the image quality looks great. It's not that big and heavy considering. Um, I, think, I think I'm going to like this, this one a lot. It focuses really fast, and of course, everything in the Z-mount system is really, really quiet. That's, it's kind of jarring at first how much noise isn't there anymore in the shutter clicking and the lenses focusing and all that. It's, yeah, a lot quieter and a little bit of an adjustment at first. So that is the 70-200 f2.8 lens that is attached to my camera. So I'm going to set that down and get into my camera bag. All right, so what I have here with the FTZ adapter attached to it, because this is my main F mount lens that I use, is a Tamron 24 to 70 F2.8 lens. And you could refer to this as the G1 version of this lens. They have a newer G2 version of the 24 to 70 F2.8 now. But this is what you would call the G1. I was able to pick up this lens used about a year and a half ago from a friend of mine who was switching systems, um, has vibration compensation, which is what Tamron calls their stabilization system. As a switch there, as a switch here to change from auto to manual focus. This is my, what I call my walk around lens, the one that I have on my camera the most. At 24 to 70 range, again at f2.8 to let in a lot of light. It's the, the range of lens that I have on my camera the most. And before this, I had an Icon 24 to 120 lens, but it was not an F2.8, as I'm sure you can guess. And so I wanted to upgrade to an F2.8 lens so to use for night photography. Before I got this, I only had my 16 to 28 Tokina F2.8 lens. And that's the only, pretty much the only lens I could do my night photography with. I wanted to be able to expand that range. And I found that this lens does really well over the last year and a half of shooting, both for night photography and, you know, regular landscape photography and all that as well. This has been a really good lens for me. It does really well at night, really well during the day. I love the range on it, and it's, it's been a good performer. I'm very happy with it. So, and I have a Polar Pro circular polarizing filter on there, and I'll talk about talk about that here in a little bit but that is my 24 to 70 moving on let's see let's pull this one out so this is the sigma 14 to 24 f2.8 art lens and this lens i just got in january to replace my Tokina 16 to 28 lens that failed. And I'll talk a little bit about that. So I bought my Tokina 16 to 28 brand new in April of 2017, at the same time I bought my Nikon D750. And as I mentioned, that was my main lens for astrophotography for, for three years at least, and still a big part of my astrophotography shooting over throughout 2021. But late in 2020, I noticed that my focusing point with the lens, my infinity focus point rather, was starting to shift a little bit. So when I was focusing and looking at the, at the focusing scale on the top of the lens, while it used to line up with infinity pretty well to be at infinity focus, that was starting to slide a little bit. And I thought that was odd, but you know, I didn't give it too much thought. The image quality was still there. Everything was still working fine. So I continued to shoot with it. And then on my Moab trip last October, I took some photos with it and got home and noticed in the images that on the upper third of the photo, the stars were getting all stretched out, whereas the stars in the center were still in pretty good sharp focus. So what I think was happening is in the optical alignment inside the lens, over time, something was shifting or drifting just a little bit at a time over those four and a half years. And by last October, it had gotten to the point where not only was the focusing point off, 
but also the optics inside were getting out of alignment and was causing that stretching of the stars in the upper part of the image. And so I took it into a shop here in Denver and they sent the lens off to Tokina. And the quote that I got back to repair the lens was more than it cost me to buy the lens brand new in the first place. And of course, by this point it was out of warranty. And so I had them send the lens back to me and I recently sold it on eBay with, of course, the qualifications on, on the listing that listing exactly what was going on with the lens. Very clear so as not to defraud anybody. But at that point, I started shopping for its replacement and I landed on the Sigma 14 to 24 art lens. And that was pretty much entirely an image quality decision. I wanted another ultra wide F28 zoom and this one, you know, I landed on this one having the best quality, better than the Nikon 14 to 24 F mount lens, better than the Tamron 15 to 30 G2. All those lenses out there that people like to use. Um, at that point, I had not made the decision to switch to the Z mount camera yet, but even if I had, I probably wouldn't have had the budget to go with the Nikon Z. 14 to 24 lens, which is supposed to be a really high quality lens, but it also cost $2,700. This one, I was able to find this used copy for $900. And it is, it was basically in brand new condition. Still had the warranty papers and tags with it and everything when it came in the box from the website that I bought it from, mpb.com. So I've been out testing with this lens a couple of times with the with the Z62 and I am super impressed with it so far. I've only used it for Astro so far. I'm sure I'll find other uses for it through the year, especially as we get into wildflower season in the mountains. But it's one of those where it has a built-in pedal-shaped lens hood because the front element bulges out, has this slide-on lens cap, but it's pretty sturdy plastic. So I'm really happy with this so far. I'm really excited to keep using it. And of course, when I'm using it on my Z6 II with the in-body stabilization, it becomes a stabilized lens, which is a nice bonus. So that is the Sigma 14 to 24 art lens. Moving on, let's reach for this one. This is my Tamron 35mm f1.8 lens. I was actually able to pick this lens up used from borrowlenses.com a little over a year ago. And I bought it purely to do astrophotography with it. I was looking for a little bit longer focal length than my 16 to 28 I had at the time. I was also looking for something faster with a lower f-stop number, in other words, to let in more light for that longer focal length. And I settled on this Tamron 35mm f1.8. It was available for a great price, and I've been super happy with it. Now, now that I've moved to the Nikon Z mount, as I mentioned, I'm using it with the FTZ adapter. I have found that it will not autofocus through the adapter. But, as I mentioned, I'm only using it for astrophotography, so I'm always manual focusing for that anyway. So that's not a problem. I just used it this last weekend to photograph the Milky Way out on the plains here in Colorado and the results look really great. So it's a nice small little lens, doesn't take up much room in my camera bag and the image quality of it has been really good. I've been very happy with this lens. So that is the Tamron 35 millimeter f1.8. Does it feel like I have too many lenses? <laughs> it's starting to feel that way myself. This is the Nikon 50mm f1.8 f mount lens, not a Z mount. And this one I actually picked up on a refurbished sale from NikonUSA.com last fall. So kind of the same reason as I picked up the 35 millimeter last spring, a little over a year ago, I was looking for something even a little longer for shooting Orion and stuff like that. Also an F point, 
f1.8 lens, so it's a little faster than my 24 to 70. I tried to do a Milky Way shot at about 50 millimeters when I was in Moab last October, and because it's an f2.8, the amount of light it was letting in was limited. So I thought, well, let me see if I can pick up the f1.8. And Nikon was doing a refurbished lens sale last fall, as I mentioned. Picked this up really cheap, and I haven't used it very much yet, but I'm I think it's going to work out really well. So that is the nifty 50, as they say, the Nikon 50 millimeter F 1.8. All right. So one, one last lens in the bag and then we'll move on to other things. This is the Nikon 200-500 f-mount zoom. Now I picked this lens up a little over a month ago, also used, as it's really tough to come by, new or used. It seems to be sold out a lot. Now it's been, before I got this, it had been quite some time since I'd had a lens longer than 200 millimeters. And in certain situations, especially photographing wildlife and stuff like that, where you want to keep your distance or taking pictures of the moon during lunar eclipses and stuff like that, I was actually renting this lens from a local rental shop at, at times when I wanted to have it available for sure. But it had been on my list to purchase one for a while because my rental experiences with the lens had been good, had really good image quality, it focused really fast. And so at some point I was looking to get one and I found a pretty good price used and decided to jump on it this spring. I've used it a little bit for taking photos of the moon and wildlife and stuff like that. But as I said, I've used, I've rented it in the past. So I know I'm going to be pretty happy with it. Using it on the Z6 II, it still focuses well, functions well through the FTZ adapter. Really happy and excited to have this, especially with the lunar eclipse coming up. It is a big lens, takes up a lot of space in my camera bag. It's a, oop, almost hurt my hand there. It, it is a little bit heavy. Got my tripod mount adapter there that kind of got my hand. Anyway, a little bit heavy, but takes up a lot of room in my bag, but definitely, definitely worth having. All right, that is my camera and my lenses in my bag, and I'll go through some of the other items here real quick. As I mentioned, when I was talking about my 24 to 70, I have Polar Pro circular polarizer filters, and I actually have them in three different sizes for the various lenses that I have. A big 95 millimeter one for the telephoto, and an 82 and 77 millimeter size for the 24 to 70 and 70 to 200. So why do I still use circular polarizing filters? Well, it's, it's kind of the one filter that you cannot duplicate digitally. The effect that it has to knock down reflections and cut down glare in your photos, you, you just can't cover for that in Photoshop. The filter just just does it better. And so I'm still a proponent of using a circular polarizing filter outdoors almost any time you're shooting during the day. You do want to be careful when using a circular polarizer with wider angle lenses so that your sky doesn't get disproportionately polarized, where it's really dark in one spot and lighter in another and looks kind of weird. You want to be careful with that. But it, like I said, it's just an effect that you cannot replicate in, in Photoshop as well as you can when you're actually using the filter on your lens. Other than that, I don't really use filters anymore. I've put away the, the graduated neutral density filters to go instead to going HDR style, where I either photograph at different exposure levels and blend them together in software, or I'll take one shot that I like, process it at different exposure values, and then put those back together in software to get that full range of, of detail, that full dynamic range of the photo that you can see when you're there, but cameras have traditionally had a harder time capturing that in one shot. 
Of course, cameras like the Z6 II, Z7 II, they have a lot of dynamic range anyway. And blending those exposures helps you take advantage of that even more to where those graduated style filters that I used to use a lot in the past, I've, I've put them away, don't use them anymore. But the circular polarizer, at least for the foreseeable future, I'll, I'll continue to have those on my lenses when I'm shooting outside. I also still have this, this plug-in remote from my D750 that is also compatible with the Z6 II. Handy for night shooting. I know I can trigger it from my phone via Bluetooth, and I have done that some, but this is a nice backup, and I was glad to have it this past weekend when I was out night shooting, and the, for some reason my phone didn't want to connect with my camera, and this was nice to have as a backup option. This is just a basic uh, Velo brand. You know, there's there's others, you know, cheap brands you can get from camera stores or Amazon or stuff like that. They don't have to be fancy. Doesn't cost very much money. Good thing to have. All right, other things I have in the camera bag. I always have this pretty good size first aid kit, especially when I'm doing workshops. I am first aid and CPR certified. So I do know how to use this stuff and I always have it with me just in case. I rarely have to get in here when I'm out, but I'd rather have it than not. So I always have that with me. Something else I carry with me, especially hiking up in the mountains, these are micro spikes for traction. These are the Catula micro spikes. And I kind of chose these over some of the others because they were rated as a lot more durable. I found to be really happy with them. And in fact, most of the time that I go hiking up in the mountains in the wintertime, unless I'm getting into really deep snow, where I'll bring my snowshoes. But if I'm staying on pretty well-packed trail, the micro spikes will do the job. And one last thing in the bag here is, let me rip this tape off here. This is my Goal Zero LED lantern. And let me see if I can find the model number on here. This is the Lighthouse Mini. I'm not sure it's even available anymore. But reasons I like this, and I bought this mainly to use for night photography to kind of light up the foreground in certain situations. The lighting level is adjustable and it actually gets really, really dim before it cuts out. I think that's the lowest brightness level and you probably can't even see it on the video. So the adjustable brightness level it lasts a really long time on a charge. In fact, I've had this thing for three years and I've charged the battery up maybe twice. <laughs> and it charges really easy. You just plug this USB into whatever power source and you can also use it as a battery to plug in another USB device there on the front. It also, besides these supports, it also has this kind of hook that comes off the top that you can use to hang it on something or you can run a cord through there and hang it that way or just set it down that is my goal zero lighthouse mini led lantern all right moving on of course i'll reach over here and grab my tripod super important to me as a landscape and astrophotographer now this tripod is i'm forgetting the model number so forgive me as i'm folding it out here to try and get a look at it this is, there it is, the Saray N1204SK. Now this is a travel tripod. And I bought this after the wind blew my old Manfrotto over a cliff up in Rocky Mountain National Park one night. Now fortunately my camera was not attached. It did damage the tripod enough that a couple months later I ended up replacing it because it was just not working out anymore. Now, this was one I bought used from B&H Photo, and a few reasons I really like it, and I've been very happy with it since I got it about almost two years ago. Got a good deal on it used. I like that it's pretty lightweight, and that the legs fold up like this, as you saw me unfolding it earlier. So it folds up pretty small and compact to carry on the side or on the 
front or back, depending on how you're looking at it on my camera bag. Very sturdy as well, and pretty, pretty adjustable. Has the twist locks that slide out. Um, have not had any problems with that. And that is my tripod, and of course on the top here I have a Gitzo ball head, a G1276M, and I also bought that used from B&H as well. It's kind of a unique design, but I like it. It's a panoramic ball head, so I can loosen it and spin it around this way while keeping the ball head locked. So as long as I have it nice and level, it works really well for panoramas. And of course it moves around like this, flips over like this, balances really well, has a quick release plates that go with it. I got this after the Manfrotto pistol grip that I used to have literally snapped off about, I trying to remember how long ago that was now, maybe three years ago. And so I bought this one, it's very sturdy and I'm really happy with it. So that is my ball head and my tripod legs. Very important to me as an outdoor landscape photographer. I will get into a few other quick accessories that I have and we'll get to the end of this. So this is my headlamp that I use when I'm out at night. This is an LED lenser headlamp. I bought this one because I don't see very well at night and it is super bright. It does have adjustable levels and I won't point it straight towards the camera. That's the lowest level, bright enough for up close work. Gets to level two and that is super bright. And at level three, it's almost like daylight. <laughs> Handy at times, I usually don't use it for anything more than level two. That is my LED lens or headlamp. It is, has a rechargeable battery in it, so I'm not using double A's and stuff like that. I like that a lot. When I am filming with my phone, I use this gimbal to get more stable footage. This is a DJI Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal, and I bought an attachment there that I mount my microphone onto. The Rode Video Micro is what I use with my phone. That is that. I don't use that as often anymore as I used to when I first started making videos, but I still do get use out of it. Happy to have it. Joby Gorillapod 5K, handy for mounting stuff on out in the field if I'm Sometimes I'll mount my light here when I'm out at night onto here. I'll show you that light here in a minute. Sometimes I'll mount my phone on here when I'm filming or, you know, taking some pictures with my phone. Just a handy little thing to have. I don't know that I've ever mounted my camera on it, but it is sturdy enough that I could. That's, that's why I bought the 5K version of it, so it can hold support enough weight that I could mount my camera on there if I wanted to, but I haven't tried that yet. That is that, and here we have the Loom Cube Panel Mini. Little LED light panel, puts out quite a bit of light, and when I'm out at night taking videos while I'm out at night shooting, this is often the light that I'm using for that. That is also rechargeable, and it has a pretty good lifespan on it. And you can adjust the brightness levels on that as well. And of course, you've probably heard me mention it in my videos a lot, and it is the camera I'm using right now to film. Pretty much 80-90% of my video filming now I do with my DJI Pocket 2 camera. It is a really small, handheld, gimbal-stabilized video camera. You can take pictures with it too, but I don't. But it does shoot 4K video. It's what I do almost all my filming with, and I'd show it to you, but I'm using it now to film. So, I like it a lot. It's really handy. It's really compact. When I first started hiking and trying to film, putting my phone on here, it just was unwieldy, right? And I'll, I'm using my phone as a monitor now, or else I put it on there. But walking around hiking, carrying this, it, it's kind of big and draws attention to yourself, and that's not what I wanted. The DJI Pocket 2 is much smaller, much less of a hassle to carry around. And I, I like it a lot. And of course, in the kit that I got, it came with this wireless microphone as well, which is super handy.
And of course, what would a what's in my camera bag video be without talking about the camera bag? This is the F-Stop Tilopa 50 liter. I bought this not quite a year ago. And if you want to learn more of the reasons about why I chose this one and why I got it when I did, you can go back to the unboxing video here on my channel that I did when I got it. So almost a year later, am I still as happy with the purchase of this camera backpack as when I got it? I will say the answer to that is yes. It carries all my gear, well, almost all my gear. It carries quite a bit of my gear very comfortably. You know, it's I, one of the main reasons I chose this style, having the separate compartment in here for my camera equipment. And then I can put, you know, the stuff like my first aid kit and my spikes and granola bars and stuff like that up here on the top. And I think my, my battery just fell out there, sorry. Extra battery. Um, I have a blower, I think that fell on the floor too. Anyway, I have an extra space up there on top to put my extra stuff. It is hydration bladder compatible. There's a smaller pocket there on top. It has straps on the side. I can mount my tripod on the side and those compression straps, or sometimes I put it on the back here with these straps. And when I got it, I was hoping that I would be able to put all my camera gear in here all the time and just carry it wherever I needed to. And then I've bought how many more lenses since then? At, at the time, I was shooting with my camera and I think three lenses, my 24 to 70, 16 to 28, and 70 to 200. Of course, since then, I've expanded with the 35 millimeter prime, the 50 millimeter prime, and the 200 to 500 telephoto, which is quite large. So it is getting really tricky to fit all of that in there now. I'm still able to do it, but it takes some finagling and it means that I don't carry my flashes with me anymore, which I didn't use them that much anyway. I've thought about getting a macro lens, but then I've thought about, well, where would I put it in there? <laughs> so it is a very tight fit in there for all my gear. Maybe at some point I will go to a larger size backpack, but for now, this is what I have and I'm very happy with it. And as far as complaints about the camera bag itself, I really don't have any. It's the F-Stop Tilopa 50 liter once again. This is black. I bought this one previous to them switching to the Dur Diamond fabric that they're using now. I'm sure that's even better. So a year later, I'm really happy with it. It's comfortable to hike with. It carries my probably 50 pounds worth of gear very well, very comfortably. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy with it. We'll leave it at that. So I'm looking around. I don't think there's any more gear here that I want to show you. The camera bag is pretty much empty. So we will wrap it up here. That is the equipment that I am using in 2022. If you are interested in getting any of this gear for yourself, I will leave the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If you use one of those links to make a purchase, I will get a small percentage back for that it will not change the price that you pay and i really appreciate that little bit of benefit back to me if you enjoyed this video please give it a like leave a comment below if you have any questions about any of this gear and my experiences with it i'll be happy to answer them and of course hit that subscribe button to keep following along with me on my adventures thank you for watching